everybody. It's Patrick McCarthy reporting with Tri-Cities Community Television. We're at our Fountainhead studio location on Westwood uh, in Port Coquitlam as part of the coverage for Municipal Elections 2022, which the election date is on October 15th. Uh, we have Fritz Redant in the office, or, or I guess in the studio. So welcome, Fritz. Um, you are the campaign manager for the People's Voice of BC. Uh, parents' Voice. Parents' BC's. Voice of BC. Yes. And uh, so what, what is, can you tell folks what that really is uh, and what, what it all stands for? Okay, well, uh, Parents Voice BC, we're a, a grassroots organization. Uh, we just uh, started about four months ago and uh, we're running uh, slates of independent school trustee candidates uh, in eight separate school districts. We have uh, 28 candidates uh, in total. And uh, our basic, uh, uh, approach or um, uh, uh, mission uh, or reason for existing is the fact that, uh, as our name uh, implies, Parents Voice, we think that the parents are increasingly being shut out with decisions about their children uh, as well as the community. And what's happening is we're getting a lot of top down uh, stuff coming from the bureaucrats in Victoria. And uh, when parents kind of ask questions or push back, they're marginalized or canceled. So th that's, that's kind of the reason we formed. Yeah, so, so you've got 28, 29 candidates, so you said four months ago. So, so how, does, how does, what was the impetus of that? Like you're, just, you're sitting around and just, we decided we're gonna run this, create this, this, this sort of this slate or what the, the concept of running a slate is new in BC, right? Or even in this region of our region. Uh, so just kind of, I mean, the actual process of getting those candidates and just kind of getting them ready. Yeah, and you know, it's, I, I think that's what's different. So uh, slates have been around in BC uh, municipally for a while, uh, especially in the big cities like Vancouver and Surrey. Uh, there's been a variety of organizations and they kind of mirror, you know, the federal and provincial parties where you have left, right, centrist parties, green parties, right? And uh, um, so, What's a, a little bit different about ours is we're focusing just on uh, school boards and school trustees, but we're not just sticking to one municipality. We're in actually uh, eight of the 60 school districts. So this is uh, uh, kind of unprecedented. And one of the reasons that we wanted to do that is to basically create a brand. Uh, if you run as an independent, it takes a long time to get your uh, to get people to know who you are, what you stand for, uh, et cetera. It can take uh, years, two or three tries, et cetera. So the idea of creating a brand is we're basically saying, you know, this is who we are, we stand for parents' input and transparency and putting students first. And uh, so the voter now knows if that's the kind of trustee I want, I'll just uh, uh, tick off the one who's got parents' voice beside their name on the ballot. Yeah, because typically, you know, even in, in, in our region here in Port Quitlam, school trustee, you know, is uh, sometimes the, the, the role that people forget about is either never contested or in some cases there are actually just enough people to run for the seats. So, so why the focus on the, on the school trustee as a slate? Um, and just, just to help people who don't understand the role of a school trustee, like, like why the... What, what power does a school trustee have when you, when you put the slate forward to have impact change? So one of the things that we believe is happening is that the power of school trustees locally has been eroded. There are 60 school districts in BC and increasingly it's one size fits all. Uh, the the uh, direction comes from primarily from Victoria. We have a Ministry of Education. We, you know, we have a provincial government. Uh, that uh, sets policy, curriculum, uh, et cetera. But what's the purpose of having 60 school boards uh, in, in, you know, in a variety of different regions around the province if it's all just uh, controlled from Victoria? So we're trying to uh, uh, get control back a little bit, uh, get uh, local parent and community input and uh, one of the values that we're running on, um, with our candidates, uh, we just, we don't have a, 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 a platform on specific issues. We uh, have six values that we're running on. And one of them is that the school board should reflect the local community's uh, 
uh, that they represent. So for example, if you're in Surrey, where we've got uh, four candidates running, it's a very multicultural, uh, uh, diverse area. So, you know, we have two Sikhs uh, uh, and a Muslim uh, running there because it much more reflects uh, th the makeup there. In other places, for example, in the Chaco Lakes, uh, where we have five candidates running, which is, you know, kind of very rural, um, uh, very sparsely populated, people live on, you know, acreage. It's, it's a very different uh, community uh, and, you know, the school board should reflect that. Yeah, but again, so, so the slate, you're, we're talking about just trying to, these are sort of independent people running on a slate, you know, against a brand, right? Against these base principles that they have. So it is, but the base principles seem very motherhood and apple pie, like they're very basic, like, you know, better education, you know, parents involved in education, um, uh, was a, you had another one is to reflect the community values. You just talked about that, and, and transparency. I think it's the other four or five. So I just I'm just trying to, when people look at that, what can you change as a school trustee, even if you're not a part of your 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 slate? Like, what is what, a school trustee? What can they do to make that change that you're talking about? Well, one of the th one of uh, the big things, you know, two of those issues uh, is the school trustees can be a conduit for uh, parents' uh, concerns, right? And they can be a conduit for transparency. So when they find things that are going out or when parents come to them and say, you know, hey, we're concerned about this, the school trustees can then organize, uh, say, events uh, where um, they can present, hey, here's what's going on. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd like your feedback. What do you guys think about this, right? Where to a large degree in the past, it, that step has been ignored. Um, people talk about PACs um, a little bit, which tend to be um, one avenue uh, for doing this in a small way, but we're, uh, we're trying to, to do it in a bigger way. And um, yeah, and one, one of the ideas that we hope to use is, you know, use the internet, use technology, because uh, it's possible to do a, a lot more sharing and getting a lot more feedback uh, from, from doing that. Yeah, and I guess you know, for me, as 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 part of you know interviewing uh, yourself, is like the school trustee act. I guess the six hundred independent school trustees that became mm -hmm. sixty in a, in a kind of a district. But that that kind of happened in nineteen fifty six, fifty seven, right? But for, at that time, at this, uh, uh, you know, Premier Bennett put that together, right? And today, trustees really just deal with the budget that's given to them. So, so I just that's the. They have no power, really, do they? They have more, more than just they have packs. I'm just just trying to see that you're 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 a steward of the budget, and you're and you have all these things that you want them to to basically affect, but they have no power to affect that. It's, that's that's my observation. You know, and I think to a large degree that would be accurate, right? We we're not uh, Pollyanna-ish in the sense that uh, you know we think that we can go in and like like you know they can't change the curriculum. That's done provincially but they can shine light on areas that uh, uh, the community might have issues and concern, which will then reflect uh, on provincial politics, right? So a lot of it is really about um, uh, intent, right? And uh, so by uh, trying to, you know, be for openness and transparency, for trying to be the parent's voice, um, it's just changing the attitude, which increasingly has been, you know, just be quiet. Here's what you're going to do. You know, uh, just focus on passing this budget, uh, in which they're very limited in the amount of influence they have on those budgets because, again, it's mostly funded from Victoria. So um, it's um, yeah. So it's it's really about just trying to create awareness uh, ab about. Uh, just what's going on and all kinds of issues. I think in many ways, uh, the way I describe this is we're kind of like the 60s hippies where, you know, we're saying we want to change the system, right? It's the system is increasingly broken. And one of the ways that, that you can tell that is in BC, uh, over 13% of students are now in private or independent schools, which is far and away the highest in Canada. Nobody else is, I think, over 10. So, you know, parents are voting by taking their kids out. So we're trying to say, hey, let's stop this because not everybody can afford 
to take their kids out. Um, so, you know, we've got, you know, we're trying to fix uh, the, the system by making it more responsive to the needs of uh, parents and, and their kids. Yeah, I, I don't know if I, I mean, I try to look those numbers up. Like, I know that the school, you know, attendance for public and, and private is growing, but it, it seems to be growing, the region is growing. I, I don't, I don't seeing a huge exodus of people going from public school to private school. Um, I mean, are you seeing, like, your, well, if I look at those percentages, am I going to see, like, oh, that, that happened last year, 10% more people went to, to private schools or compared to public. Is that really what you're seeing? Yeah, if you look at StatsCan, you, you will see that uh, it is increasing. Okay. Yeah, Okay. definitely. And um, even homes, like homeschooling has doubled from, but, you know, it's small numbers now, from point, yeah. point 0.2 to point 0.4. But it's the independent private schools. That's a big one. It's it's yeah. over thirteen percent. And like yeah. I say, the next biggest province I think is nine. Well, I think you, you hit the point for homeschool. If you if you definitely want to control or manage the curriculum directly, it's homeschooling. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you have that right in in British Columbia. That's right. So, so um, so. But one of the areas that seems to come around, you know, is the concept of SOGI. You know, we've sort of. Yeah. So is that is that one of those areas that you feel is imposed upon the school system or is it something that you want more input into or how do you guys stand on that? Yeah, so there's there's a lot of big issues, you know, uh, in SOGI, which is sexual orientation, uh, gender identity. Um, you know, obviously th that's that can be a very touchy uh, issue for a lot of parents. It was uh, basically an uh, initiative of the government came, no, probably about five or six years ago. Um, and it's, it's you know, it's very complicated, the, the, the actual, uh, uh, um, programs that are involved have grown and changed and then there's all of the um, uh, materials that they use. Um, but the fact that it's still controversial uh, to this day kind of tells you there hasn't really been a true consensus achieved. A lot of people uh, aren't even aware that it exists, etc. So that's why we don't pay, take a position on it one way or the other. Um, we just think that that's an example of one issue where there should be more sunlight input um, um, and, and, and back and forth on, especially because after all this time, it's, it, it, it's still controversial, right? So that's an example of something that was kind of brought in. And even the trustees uh, in many districts didn't know about it until parents came to them and said, hey, are you aware that you know, my kids are you know, learning about this in, in their class? And the trustees are going, what? So, you know, it's, it's, I think it's that kind of stuff that, that we're, um, yeah, that we're trying to put sunlight on, not, you know, specifically. Some of, you know, I would say, um, you know, we didn't, when, when we vetted our, our candidates, we never asked them their position on SOGI. We never asked them, you know, their religion. We never asked them, you know, a position on VAX or anything. Like, we just asked them if they shared you know these six values uh, uh, that we're, uh, we're, we're talking about but um, in in many cases um, you know there's there's great diversity there so for example one of our uh, uh, candidates um, you know his son is gay and he's uh, you know totally on board with soji he might have some issues about um, you know age appropriateness of some of the materials but that's the problem. So even someone like him, who's basically, you know, this is a part of his life, um, um, he gets labeled and, and canceled just for saying, hey, um, what about the age appropriateness? And then all of a sudden you're, oh, you're a hater and, you know, blah, 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 right? And I think that's what parents are, are feeling is this sense that um, if you just stick your head up a little bit and just want a little bit more clarity, um, you can often pay a price. So it's, um, I think increasingly, um, so, you know, just taking a step back. So we started four months ago. We just put this out to our, our networks. And to our surprise, like we, we would have been happy if we would have got two or three school districts with, you know, 10 people, right? But we've really found that we struck a nerve, right? We just sort of started putting it out to, you know, a few hundred people. And people said, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, and especially once we settled on the name and they, they, they saw a parent's voice, it really does seem to be resonating where there's a lot of parents and community people who are feeling this, right? There's just this sense that it's top down, one size fits all, and shut up. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, for, uh, I guess I, I'd look at that again as, uh, you know, you just hit the, when you sort of talk about the provincial, you know, uh, management. I mean, it's, it's so to me, we're talking uh, seven or eight years ago, this, this sort of the concept of, of how we manage school boards or mm -hmm. school trustees is, is across, you know, predominantly conservative, you know, whether BC Liberal conservative, but now NDP. I mean, it's mm -hmm. predominantly changing. but. But at the same time, the power is not in the trustee's position, right? So, so it's, uh, I'm just, is that disingenuous to let people think, oh, you can elect all these people, uh, people's voice of BC, and also there's going to be change? Because there's, there's not going to happen from how I see it, unless, unless there's a different view. Well, I think, I think it, they have a platform. So if you're a school trustee or a city councillor, uh, you, you have a platform that's not available to, you know, Joe Parent. So at the very least, they can then uh, use their platform uh, to encourage sunlight and transparency and input, right? Yeah. So whether that's achieved or not, but at least there will be a voice that we feel is currently lacking. And, um, and that's how change happens, right? Yeah is if we just say, well, the system is like this, there's nothing we can do about it, then it's never going to change, right? So I think, I think that's, that's why these people are so keen to come forward. Mm. They're not naive enough to, to think that they can go in there and wave a magic wand and, and, uh, and you know, ultimately you need four uh, uh, similar voices. Most school boards are seven. In the Tri-Cities here, we're, we're at nine. Uh, so you actually need five in the Tri-Cities who have similar views if you want to, to push these agendas, right? Mm. So, so, you know, we recognize that and that's why we tried to, we, we could have actually run a lot more candidates in a lot more places, but we only had one. So we, we just didn't think it was worth it. We had one in Vancouver, North Van, uh, Langley, um, you know, all kinds of places. But it's, uh, yeah, the goal ultimately is you need four out of the seven or five out of the nine if you want to be able to set agendas and, uh, and, and, and do a lot of these things. Mm. Uh, and how would you set the agenda? Like, I'm just curious. I mean, help us understand. Like, say, say the whole district is is parents' voice of BC. Well, they then set the school board uh, agendas, and they can say, okay, let's discuss this. Let's talk about how we can um, maybe get more public input on some of these new uh, major initiatives that are coming down from Victoria. Right. Uh, as in, I mean, so how would Soji have changed if 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 that was the case? Today. Well, I think I think number one, there would be much more clarity what it is, what the materials are. Um, so then, you know, people, people like right now, a lot of the problem is there's you talk to ten people, you get ten different ideas of what it actually is, right? So if uh, there's a way to find, like, I I I really one of the things that really baffles me is why they don't do that. Like, if you look at say city government, um, quite often, you know, they're gonna do something, they hold a public hearing, they, you know, they, they have displays, all this kind of stuff. People can go give their two cents worth. Um, but yet with the schools, we never do that, mm. right? It's kind of, you know, here it is and, um, and don't ask questions, right? And, you know, um, one other uh, uh, aspect of this I think is really important is um, we often, we often get told, well, the parents aren't experts, right? You've got all these people who this is their job. You know, they, they know all about, say, talking about the SOGI thing. Um, you know, they're experts uh, in this kind of thing. Um, our response is that parents are the experts in their kids. Nobody knows their kids better than, than the parents, number one. Number two, experts are often wrong uh, or they disagree, right? There's often uh, a variety of views on many different subjects. Um, and then third, a lot of times uh, with experts, if they are wrong, there's no accountability. And I'll give you an example. Yesterday was Truth and Reconciliation Day. Another way to describe that would be the, edu the educational experts from 50 years ago screwed up uh, and now we're apologizing for it day, right? Mm -hmm. Because they thought that that was the best way to deal with um, uh, uh, First Nations children and integration, et cetera. And, you know, now we realize that that was a huge mistake, right? 
So um, experts are wrong. And uh, if we're just going to have a society that's run by the bureaucrats or the experts in Victoria, we might as well stop having elections and, you know, we just go into a techno... Uh, um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely... Um, you know, we live in a free society and people should have a choice to, to make their own decisions about their, their kids or about all kinds of other things, their health, uh, et cetera. But I think, though, you know, again, we're just talking in, in principle, yes, parents should know their kids, but they're not, they're not experts either. I mean, I mean you know, my example would be uh, my sexual education came from a grade 11 high school teacher who brought in a sex ed person into our chemistry class. You know, mm -hmm. if I'd waited for my dad to give me that lesson, I, I, I would have been in ter serious trouble. So sometimes parents, there's things that they may find confusing or don't understand, like in the sense of soji, and we'll focus on that. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's inclusive in the sense of uh, sexual identity uh, and uh, sexual orientation. But it also talks about the nuclear family. Some of, these, mm -hmm. some of these kids may have two moms or two dads or two dads and two moms because their parents have split uh, and half sure. brothers and half sisters. So this this. It's, it's covering this, this kind of modern spectrum of how the students are represented in that classroom. So does that principle, is that something that we wouldn't want to put or pose upon the, the educate the kids about? Or? Well, um, you know, different, you know, different uh, parents and different, uh, you know, uh, communities are going to have different views on that, right? I think a lot of... Um, you know, especially a lot of newer Canadians might have different views about that. And I think in different parts of the province, you're going to have different views on some of those aspects, right? And so that's why we really call for flexibility. So like if you're in Vancouver or Coquitlam, Tri-Cities, where it's more liberal, you'll, um, y y you'll maybe have different instructions than what, what you maybe have in the interior of the province or in a, a more multi-ethnic you know that that's why we say it's up to the community to decide and also i think you know ultimately it's it's having the choice where the and, and i think this does happen in, in in some situations where they're allowed to to pull their kids away from instruction that they don't feel comfortable with mm. yeah it's, it's kind of i guess you, you're never going to please everybody no so so to me it's uh, the, the actual mandate of soji is a one page i think thing mm. uh, it's pretty simple it's online there to see it uh, and for you know the soji one two three is the material but it, it, you, the, the, in a sense, that's not a, that's not mandated, right? You, you, mm -hmm. as a teacher, I can teach. My, you know, right. Soji's allowed, just like my, my teacher brought in the sex education in, in mm -hmm. grade eleven. He was allowed to do that, even though the school didn't provide it, right? So, so, it, yeah. It, it, to me, it just seems like you're never going to please everyone. So, no. Then it's going to be in a perfect world. If you don't like it, it's no. And if you like it, it's it's some form of yes. But yeah. how are you going to please the people who don't like it? Like, th th say I bring up something tomorrow they don't like. I mean, they're not going to be happy. So. Well, I exactly. But I think in today's world, um, again, flexibility uh, should be possible, right? Especially given the modern technologies that we have, the internet. You know, there's lots of different ways to uh, present different materials and, mm -hmm. and provide more flexibility. And I hope, especially within the public school system, because... I think the worst thing that can happen is if that number continues to go up where it's 13, 14, 15, 20, 25 percent um, leave the public school system. And I think, you know, some people would, would like that. Um, you know, some people said, well, you guys should be parents choice, not parents voice. And I know a lot of, you know, free marketers and, and uh, people, um, um, you know, a lot of people believe in, you know, the voucher system and that. But that's we're, we're actually the opposite. We're actually trying to improve the public system by making it more responsive to the parents, the community, and the students. So I know in, in a local publication, I mean, you've got experience, you know, being a campaign major, manager for the Conservative Party. Yes. So, so help me understand why this is not a conservative sort of um, agenda or, or you think that's misrepresentation? Well, yeah, so, yeah, my background, you know, I'm a center-right, you know, free enterprise, so I'm a, you know, B.C. liberal, federal conservative, um, and, you know, I'm basically, you know, pro-small business, uh, um, pro-choice in, you know, most, most uh, things. Um, so, um, so in, in a very generic sense, this is the classic left versus right thing of more government versus less government, right? 
So by giving parents and the community more input, we're basically doing that at the expense of more government control, right? So I think that's, that's what you're seeing here is the battle between bureaucrats thinking they know best and everybody should listen, or the individual citizens and families wanting more uh, rights and responsibilities. Mm. So, so we'll, we'll talk the politics part. I mean, just I mean, I know Pierre Pellevue just was actually tweeted out. I think we need to get need you know get more involved in the school trustees. So you get that kind of that kind of announcement, and then we're talking about um, and just trying the context mm -hmm. of how it how it can be perceived as be political. And you've got a sense. You talk about BC Liberals, very center right. And, and you've got the, sort of the conservatives back in 57, 56, 57 bringing in the School Trustee Act. And now it, the only compelling difference is there's something's happened in the last five or six years that people are all up in arms about. Um, well, is, is, that, is that true? Well, it's not just so, so like, like there's a lot of things, you know, right. like the way they shut down or handled um, the, the, the COVID response. Um, you know, so there's, there's you know, um, I'm sort of drawing a blank right now, but you know, there's like 15 or 20 issues that our candidates said, yeah. this is what's bugging me, right? So it yeah. wasn't... But just, just uh, we can yeah. come back to, uh, yeah. just the, the politics of it. You know, you're, you're telling, you're, you're, you're saying, I mean, in, in, in fairness, yes, my, my track record does not impede my, you know, I have my thoughts, but I, I'm seeing it more as a parent issue, but we're just talking about change, but provincially that's like why didn't the BC Liberals change this this the this 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 uh, kind of way of managing school trustees like so it was sort of a sense 600 schools being into 60 to be managed better right about 50, 1957 so I'm just curious what brought this sort of this 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 swell of, of concern that we were just talked about which which I'm just trying to get to that I guess um, yeah I think it's just the sense that increasingly uh, there's less input and um, responsiveness, right? right? So I, I think that it's just that sense or that feeling. And perhaps it's always been there. And um, for and and now, now people are more tapped into it. And I think, you know, after the last two years where, you know, a lot of kids were at home and they were doing the Zoom and, you know, parents were much more directly involved with their kids' education because they had to be, yep. right? So I think that's made people much more aware um, and, um, yeah, so I, I yeah, I, th I think the last two years have had a huge, uh, uh, in impact on, on people's life. A lot of people who were much more laid back about certain issues suddenly saw the world change and, mm -hmm. and, uh, in, in lots of different ways and, and are now coming forward and, and want to be involved. Yeah. So, so that sounds to me valid, you know, you're seeing your kids, you know, in class as you work you know, as you're doing your own work. But BC as a public school is, it rates itself as an, an A plus or an A, a category rating. So, so the, when we say schools being good, I mean, that's, you get an A. I mean, uh, I didn't get A's in school, so I would, I'd take an A. So, so um, I, what, 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 you think schools could be better? Oh, absolutely, right. yeah, yeah. Do you, do you agree with the grading process of that or do you think A is correct or? Well, I think if, if, you know, we wouldn't have 13% of private schools if, if that was totally true. Obviously, 13% of people at least think that um, an alternative is better. So, um, yeah. So, um, I I just want to go back. Like you know, you're bringing up uh, Polyev and the, pl the political thing. There's kind of uh, three things that um, uh, when people look at uh, parents' voice, and they Google, you know, the 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 people behind it, et cetera. And uh, you know, one of the things uh, that comes up is uh, Mark Vella, our founder. He once had an organization to encourage more Christians to get involved in politics. And um, so, because of that, um, you know, they said, "Oh, this is somehow a, a, a Christian organization, and we're hiding it because nowhere on our website does it talk about that." Right. But again, if, if he was any other religion, um, they would be applauding it, right? Mm -hmm. So somehow, uh, because in his past he's tried to encourage Christians to get involved, um, that is seen as, as a bad thing. And um, we don't really see that. As, as I said, we never, 
vetted any of our candidates based on religion um, or uh, 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 beliefs. Uh, second thing is a lot of our uh, candidates um, um, were skeptical about the uh, COVID uh, response and things that happened uh, in the last two years. And um, so, again, they've sort of come at us and said, oh, this is a conspiracy. You guys, you know, the anti-vax people. Um, and again, we never ask anybody what their views uh, were on that topic. Uh, I think one of the reasons uh, um, people with those views got involved was because they were skeptical. Um, and, you know, in some cases, it's they're probably correct in the sense that you know, they were promised that the vaccines would work, would stop it, and here we are on fourth and fifth and sixth booster shots. So, um, yeah, so there's no um, conspiracy of anti-vaxxers behind this uh, uh, organization that's very much, um, you know, like I say, a grassroots that, that just came up. And then the third uh, thing is what you were just saying around, you know, Conservative Party and Polyev. And um, I know no local newspaper here, uh, you know, brought up because of my uh, uh, involvement in, with the Conservative Party. But, you know, we really wish the Conservative Party would have helped us out. Mm -hmm. You know, we made MPs and writing associations aware of what we were doing, and we basically got no response. You know, a few people said, well, good on you. But, um, yeah, it would, be, it would, would have been nice if... Um, if, if they would have given us a hand, so, but they haven't, right? So, you know, it, it's, I, I think the, the, the best part of our story is just really how grassroots and, and how it grew and how we tapped into something. And, you know, you're, you're saying about the A+, plus, but I think, uh, you know, if we did a survey of, of all the, the parents in BCA, I doubt that you would get an A plus rating. I think uh, parents would probably have a, a much more nuanced grade than that. Well, I want to thank you to come in. You know, 30 minutes went really quickly. Uh, but uh, thanks for coming to the studio and thanks for helping us uh, clarify a few things. And uh, I'm sure we'll always open to have you come back. Yeah, no, th thank you. We, we love to talk about it. That's uh, Fritz Verdant. He is the campaign manager for the Parents Voice of BC. Uh, uh, they're running uh, 28 or 29 candidates uh, for school trustee in the 2022 election, which is, of course is on October 15th. This is Patrick McCarthy reporting for Tri-Cities Community Television. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.